What operational hurdles can arise when managing logging systems within an organization? How do redundant power supplies and fans contribute to server reliability? Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. Let us go through some of the ISC Square's cybersecurity certifications question and answers. Question number one. How can Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, or Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, contribute to securing computer networks? Option A, to describe the network design and architecture of an organization. Option B, to outline the responsibilities of involved parties in sharing information and resources. Option C, to specify the terms and conditions of end-user license agreements. Option D, to define service level agreements, SLAs, with cloud service providers. The correct answer is. Option B, to outline the responsibilities of involved parties in sharing information and resources. Memorandum of Understanding or Memorandum of Agreement are valuable tools for fostering collaboration and information sharing on security matters, ultimately contributing to a more secure network environment. Service level agreements are typically formal contracts between a service provider and a customer that define service expectations, metrics, and remedies for non-performance. End-user license agreements define the terms and conditions for using software. Memorandum of understandings or memorandum of agreements wouldn't be used for this either. Network design and architecture is a technical aspect that wouldn't be outlined in a memorandum of understanding or memorandum of agreement. Question number two. Considering a scenario where system admins require read and modify and developers require read and execute permissions, how can an access control list be configured to enforce this on a Linux file? Option A, system administrators, read, developers, and write. Option B, system administrators, read, write, developers, and read, write, execute. Option C, system administrators, read, write, developers, and read, execute. Option D, system administrators, read, write, execute, developers, and read. The correct answer is. Option C, system administrators, read, write, developers and read, execute. System administrators, they get full control with read and write permissions, allowing them to modify the file content. Developers, they can read the file content and execute it if it's a script, but they cannot modify the content itself, preventing accidental or unauthorized changes. Question number three. How do redundant power supplies and fans contribute to server reliability? Option A, faster server performance. Option B, improved data storage. Option C, enhanced network connectivity. Option D, redundancy and fault tolerance. The correct answer is. Option D, redundancy and fault tolerance. Redundant power supplies and fans enhance server reliability by providing redundancy and fault tolerance which are essential for ensuring continuous operation and minimizing the risk of downtime due to hardware failures. Redundant power supplies and fans essentially provide backups for critical components in the server. If one power supply or fan fails, the redundant one can immediately take over, ensuring uninterrupted operation. This redundancy helps mitigate the risk of system downtime due to hardware failures. Redundant power supplies and fans also contribute to fault tolerance. Fault tolerance refers to the ability of a system to continue operating even in the presence of hardware failures or other errors. Therefore, the option redundancy and fault tolerance is the correct choice. Question number four. What access control system restricts access based on the confidentiality level of data and a user's authorization to access that level? Option A, Mandatory Access Control, MAC. Option B, Discretionary Access Control, DAC. Option C, Attribute-Based Access Control, ABAC. Option D, Role-Based Access Control, RBAC. The correct answer is. Option A, Mandatory Access Control, MAC. Mandatory Access Control is the access control system that restricts access based on both the confidentiality level of data and a user's authorization to access that level. 
In a mandatory access control system, each piece of data is assigned a classification or sensitivity label, typically based on its level of confidentiality. This classification indicates the degree of sensitivity or importance of the data. For example, data might be classified as top secret, secret, confidential, or unclassified, depending on its level of sensitivity. Therefore, the option mandatory access control is the correct choice. Question number five. Why are rigorous procedures for managing keys and locks critical for maintaining security in a secure facility? Option A, to deter shoulder surfing. Option B, to maintain overall security. Option C, to enhance lighting systems. Option D, to prevent locks from being bumped. The correct answer is. Option B, to maintain overall security. Rigorous procedures for managing keys and locks are critical for maintaining security in a secure facility because they directly contribute to maintaining overall security by preventing unauthorized access, securing assets and information, mitigating risks, enhancing physical security, and meeting compliance requirements. Effective key and lock management procedures ensure that only authorized individuals have access to the facility. In a secure facility, there may be valuable assets, confidential information, or sensitive equipment that need to be protected from theft, tampering, or unauthorized access. Proper management of keys and locks helps mitigate security risks associated with breaches, theft, or intrusions. In many industries, there are regulatory requirements or industry standards that mandate the implementation of rigorous key and lock management procedures as part of overall security protocols. Therefore, the option to maintain overall security is the correct choice. Question number 6. Within an access control system, how is the term identification used? Option A. Determining user access rights. Option B. Monitoring user activities. Option C. Preventing unauthorized access. Option D. Verifying the identity of users. The correct answer is. Option D. Verifying the identity of users. Within an access control system, the term identification is used to verify the identity of users attempting to access the system or its resources. Identification in an access control system refers to the process of confirming the identity of users attempting to access the system or resources within it. Once the user provides their credentials for identification, the system verifies the authenticity of the provided information to ensure that the user is who they claim to be. While identification establishes the user's identity, it is the subsequent step of authorization that determines the user's access rights within the system. Effective identification mechanisms help enhance security by ensuring that only authorized users are granted access to sensitive resources or information within the system. This process is essential for user authentication, enhancing security, and facilitating auditing and monitoring of user activities. Therefore, the option verifying the identity of users is the correct choice. Question number 7. When a user encounters problems connecting to the VPN, what preliminary action should be taken to understand the root cause? Option A. Ensure the user's computer has the latest software updates. Option B. Examine the user's VPN client configuration. Option C. Investigate the network access control in AC system logs. Option D. Verify the organization's third-party connectivity settings. The correct answer is. Option B. Examine the user's VPN client configuration. Examining the user's VPN client configuration is the most appropriate preliminary action to take when troubleshooting VPN connectivity issues as it helps identify potential misconfigurations or errors that may be preventing the user from establishing a successful VPN connection. The VPN client configuration encompasses various settings and parameters required for establishing a secure connection to the VPN server. This includes information such as the VPN server's address, authentication method, encryption settings, and any required credentials. The VPN client configuration serves as the initial point of contact between the user's device and the VPN infrastructure. Therefore, the option examine the user's VPN client configuration is the correct choice. Question number 8. What operational hurdles can arise 
when managing logging systems within an organization. Option A, increased storage capacity. Option B, increased speed of the system. Option C, increased entertainment for users. Option D, alterations to the messages that are recorded, log files being edited or deleted, and storage capacity of log file media being exceeded. The correct answer is Option D, alterations to the messages that are recorded, log files being edited or deleted, and storage capacity of log file media being exceeded. Alterations to recorded messages, log files being edited or deleted, and storage capacity of log file media being exceeded, are critical operational hurdles that organizations may encounter when managing logging systems. One operational hurdle is the risk of unauthorized alterations to the messages recorded in the log files. If individuals with malicious intent gain access to the logging system, they may tamper with the logged events or messages to conceal their activities or manipulate the record of events. Another challenge is the possibility of log files being edited or deleted either accidentally or intentionally. As logging systems generate a vast amount of data over time, organizations must ensure they have sufficient storage capacity to retain log files for the required duration, as dictated by regulatory requirements, internal policies, or investigative needs. Therefore, the option alterations to the messages that are recorded, log files being edited or deleted, and storage capacity of log file media being exceeded is the correct choice. Question number 9. What role does an intrusion prevention system play in the overall network security strategy? Option A, to detect and prevent network attacks. Option B, to improve network performance. Option C, to monitor network traffic. Option D, to remove malware from a network. The correct answer is Option A, to detect and prevent network attacks. An intrusion prevention system plays a critical role in the overall network security strategy by detecting and preventing network attacks, enhancing the security posture of the network, and proactively defending against cyber threats. One of the primary functions of an IPS is to continuously monitor network traffic for signs of suspicious or malicious activity. It analyzes incoming and outgoing packets, looking for patterns or signatures that match known attack signatures or behavior indicative of an ongoing attack. By actively monitoring network traffic, the IPS can detect a wide range of network-based attacks, including but not limited to denial-of-service attacks, buffer overflow attacks, SQL injection, and malware propagation. In addition to detection, an IPS is designed to take immediate action to prevent detected attacks from reaching their targets or causing harm to the network infrastructure or assets. By quickly detecting and mitigating threats, an IPS reduces the window of opportunity for attackers to exploit vulnerabilities and compromise network security. Therefore, the option to detect and prevent network attacks is the correct choice. Question number 10. What is a denial of service attack and how does it disrupt legitimate users? Option A, an attack that is designed to prevent authorized users from accessing a network or resource. Option B, an attack that is designed to disrupt network traffic. Option C, an attack that is designed to steal sensitive data from a network or resource. Option D, an attack that is designed to gain unauthorized access to a network or resource. The correct answer is Option A, an attack that is designed to prevent authorized users from accessing a network or resource. A denial-of-service attack is designed to prevent authorized users from accessing a network or resource by overwhelming it with malicious traffic thus disrupting legitimate users' ability to use the service. In a denial-of-service attack, the attacker floods the target network, system, or service with a high volume of malicious traffic or requests. This flood of traffic overwhelms the resources or bandwidth available, causing legitimate requests to be delayed or denied. As a result, legitimate users are unable to access the network or resource, leading to service degradation or complete unavailability. Denial-of-service attacks typically target the availability of the network, system, or service rather than attempting to steal data or gain unauthorized access. By rendering the target inaccessible or unusable to legitimate users, the attacker achieves their goal of disrupting operations, causing financial losses, reputational damage, and potentially violating service-level agreements. 
Therefore, the option, an attack that is designed to prevent authorized users from accessing a network or resource is the correct choice. Thanks for watching, we'll meet you in the next video.